there. I just finished cleaning out my backpack puke box. You know, the one you see right behind me that sits on top of my fridge. Whew. It was a doozy this time. It was full, chock full of things and overflowing because I haven't had a chance to get to it. I had a couple of layers of stuff stacked on the top. And while I was going through that box, I started to do one of notice one of my old patterns popping up. You know, because I'm I don't think I'm a naturally linear person. I don't always think of things as Da, da, da. I, don't, I tend to view myself as a little more creative, maybe a little bit more out of the box. I don't, I'm not a perfectionist. I, I let stuff pile up and come over the top. And sometimes when I have a task that I don't really want to do or it feels really big, I can really easily slip into my old pattern of thinking. And it looks a little like this. When I start to open that up, and I'm pulling out the papers and I'm deciding what things look good. There's a slip that there's a paper that slipped in there that was a sign up sheet for something. And my previous brain wants me to stop, pause, fill that out, and get that ready to go. But a lot of years of practicing editing have taught me this. You even have to edit your mind. In other words, when you're doing a project and you have, let's say, it, it could be anything from taking the school papers down from a big box down to three or four papers that you're going to keep forever and putting the rest in recycling, which was mine today. Or it could be that laundry room that you have been dumping stuff in for five years and you walk in there and you shut some, shove something else in there and you shut the door quick before anybody dies. It could be anything like that. What you have to do is edit your thoughts. I see this happen to people all the time. You start a project and you go, oh, this belongs here. And then you go into that room and you see that there is no place for it in there and you start to put it away. And the next thing you know, you're kind of, you're the star of that book if you give a mouse a cookie and, <laughs> and you know what happens in that book, right? A mess creates a mess, creates a mess. The next thing you know, you've worked for three hours and you walk back into the room you started with and it still looks like a disaster and you have nothing done and you think, ah, I'm a failure at this. So when you're starting something like this, either a room that's highly uncomfortable for you or an edit that you don't love, you have to edit your mind. You have to edit and put blinders on. Don't check Facebook. Don't look at that ping that comes in on your phone. Sometimes I even write a sticky note and I put a sticky note on my phone that says, I am not allowed to check this until 1230. I really help myself through some of those things. And then rather than stopping and you know, saying, oh, I need to put this here because I'm going to send this to their birth mother. Or I'm going to do this project. Or I'm going to do this thing. What I do is I say, no, right now, my job is to take these papers, put them into two stacks, recycle and this one. And then I keep a notebook by me. So I'm editing my mind. And then this is my way of sort of containerizing my thoughts. As I come across stuff that needs to be done later, I'm making a little note or a list or things that don't fit back into that category. Maybe I'm stacking them into the next section, but they're the next job. So an example of that would be like, in this box, I found all the kids track and field ribbons. So part of me wants to go upstairs and put up command hooks and put their track and field ribbons up there because they really like them or take a picture of all of them. But right now, I don't know for sure. I'm not deciding. I just found a container and I put them in here. See, so I containerized what I don't know what to do with yet. So that way I could stay on task. I made myself a couple stacks. These are things I'm doing to decide this summer. And these are things that we have to talk about tonight. So I, I containerize what's left over after that to deal with in the next step. Now I could start dinner, put all of this away, and I would be fine. And then I'm just going to label label and keep going on these extra things until I have them all done. So instead of letting your project get bigger and bigger and bigger, start to let it get smaller and smaller and smaller until it becomes this thing that's finished all the way. And then this thing. And don't walk away. Do not pass go. Do not check your email. <laughs> Stay on task. You will feel more successful. You will get more things edited. And you will have a stronger sense of knowing what is important and what is not if you can stick to this, okay? Let me know how it works for you. I'll talk to you later. Bye.